Hey everybody, thanks for joining me in my series of review videos for the California PE Seismic Exam. Today I've got a base shear example problem for you in which we're given a building and we're told to calculate the base shear based off these given parameters. So essentially we're given a community college building with an occupant load of 750 people and the building's going to be utilizing a steel special moment frame and based off of these given parameters we're told to calculate the base shear those parameters are that the spectral response acceleration parameter at one second is less than 0.6 g the design spectral acceleration parameter is 1.3 g the design spectral acceleration parameter at the one second period is 0.92 g the period of the structure itself is 0.6 g and the long period is eight seconds now if you're not familiar with these terms here i've got another video that I'm going to include in the description, which should walk you through the response spectrum and uh, the way it's implemented in the code and the various uh, notations and, and uh, methodology that's involved with its implementation with ASCE 7. Now, based off of these, we're instructed to calculate the base shear. Prior to doing so, it's probably important to establish what codes we are referring to. So I'm referring to the California Building Code 2016 and ASCE 710. If you are going to be taking the exam, I would highly recommend buying ASCE 710. Uh, I'm unsure if the most recent version is going to be utilizing the ASCE 716. I happen to just have both of these codes and am utilizing them. When I took the exam, it was based off 710. If you'd like to access the CBC, that's actually available online for free. Um, Although uh, I'm not sure if, if you'd be able to download it or not, you might have to purchase that one. Now, in attacking this problem, I'd like to start out by asking uh, some questions. And here are my questions. First off, how do we calculate the base shear? So the base shear is the total amount of shear that we anticipate to see uh, at the ground level. So the base shear V. Well, how do we calculate that? We calculate that based off of the formula included in the code. So we're going to go ahead and write those out. So if you turn to chapter 12 of ASCE 710, it actually defines a base shear for you. And the base shear is equal to, base shear V is equal to C sub S times W, where W is the effective seismic weight of your building, and C sub S is your seismic coefficient, right? So W, the weight of the building, W, we can actually, we actually know. Right. So W is 500 kips plus 500 kips, 200, 200, and 125. So we'll say say 500 plus 500 plus 200 plus 200 plus 125 equals, and that's for a total of 1525 kips. Right. Now the seismic coefficient. What exactly is the seismic coefficient? So the seismic coefficient is actually based off of your design spectral acceleration parameter and uh, a number of different factors. And it's defined generally per code as SDS divided by R divided by your important, your seismic importance factor. And that's going to be write it in blue here. ASCE 710 equation 12.8-2. Okay, so that's your seismic coefficient. It's also actually defined based off of your periods. So in our situation, we've got t, our period is less than the long period, and in that we're actually given maxes and mins. So our maximum for c sub x is equal to sd1 divided by our period times r divided by i e, right? And then our minimum s min is equal to 0 0.044 sds times i sub e, right? And these are equations, and I'm just going to say SCE 710 equation. 12.8-3 in ASCE 710 equation 
12.8-5. Okay. And ASC 710 also has another formula for when your uh, your one second spectral response acceleration uh, is greater than 0.6 g, but as you see here, it's less than 0.6 g, so we're not going to worry about that. So these are the three that we are concerned with for the seismic coefficient, right? Now you're probably looking at this if you haven't looked at this before, probably looking at R and I sub E and saying, well, what, what exactly am I looking at? Well, R is your response modification factor, and it's essentially a means of taking into account the ductility of a system. So response mod factor and I sub E is equal to the seismic importance. Oh, that doesn't look good. The seismic importance. And so when I say taking into account the ductility of a system, essentially we have what you call an elastic analysis is what you're doing per code. And if you were to take the acceleration, the design, spectral design acceleration parameter and multiply it by the weight directly, you'd end up with a force that corresponds to uh, some type of loading, assuming that nothing in your building is going to yield, nothing in that structure is going to yield. And what the response modification factor does is say, okay, no, some things are going to yield and they're going to yield inelastically, meaning they won't return to their original form. And so various materials and various systems are going to yield inelastically in different ways. And so what the R factor does is that it reduces your load to take that into account. So you're not designing for such a high load as to say that, okay, everything is going to yield elastically. You're saying, no, I'm going to design for this lower load, but assuming the structural integrity is going to be maintained based off of the material's ability or its ductility to yield inelastically, right? So accordingly, for a steel special moment frame, you're going to have a higher response modification factor because you're going to get a larger reduction on your load because it is more ductile, right? So actually, we're going to answer question number four. What is a response modification factor? In this situation, we're going to end up with R is equal to 8, right? And so R is equal to 8, that's actually, that's actually coming from... ASCE 710 table 12.2-1. Okay, so next up we're looking at the seismic importance factor. The seismic importance factor is essentially based off of what risk category your building falls under. You're essentially going to boost your load up, right? So if it's if you're at a higher risk, if, if this if code is going to define this building at, as a high risk category, meaning it's going to have a larger impact on folks, then you're going to have a higher importance factor. But first we have to find out what is the risk category for this particular building. Well actually you can you can actually look up the risk category in the CBC, right? And so the CBC is going to have a table which will go in it'll tell you if you go to uh, if you go to CBC table that table is 0.60 0.5. So this particular table is going to say, okay, for a load, an occupancy load that's greater than 500, you're going to end up in risk category three. Okay. And then you can go back into ASCE 710. So ASCE 710, and you're going to go into table at the beginning of the book, table 1.5-2, okay? And that's gonna tell you, okay, this since you're in risk category three, your importance factor, since this building is, has an occupancy load greater than 500, your importance factor is 1.25, okay? So now you essentially have everything you need to do to calculate what the base shear is, right? So you're gonna take all of this, Okay, and you're going to start. So you're going to start calculating. So let's start with CS based off just the formula. CS is equal to what did we have? SDS. SDS 
divided by r divided by i sub e, okay? And SDS was equal to 1.30g, right? 1.30g uh, divided by 8 for that special uh, steel moment frame divided by 1.25, okay? So CS is going to end up being equal to 0.20, okay? Next up, what's C sub S? Max, okay, how did we define that before? That's SD1 divided by the period times R divided by I. So that's equal to SD1 divided by the period times R divided by I, okay? And that's just gonna be equal to 0.92G, which is our SD1, divided by 0 0.6 times eight, RR divided by 1.25, okay? And that's going to end up being 0 0.24. So that's our maximum. So naturally, it's it's larger than C sub S. Intuitively, that, that makes sense, right? Um, if, if C sub S were larger than our maximum, then we would go with our maximum, okay? Now, what did we have for the minimum? We go back and we say, okay, we had 0 0.044, 0 0.044 SDS times I sub E. Okay. And one thing with this, by the way, note that this actually, as it's defined in code, this actually has to be greater than 0 0.01. Okay. So note that that's included. And in when you actually, when you look that up in code, when you go and you look up this reference, we'll note that there's a 0 0.01. Okay. So we got 0 0.044 times our SDS, which is 1.30G times 1.25, okay? So we got CS min is equal to 0 0.07, okay? So you got C sub S, oh, there's supposed to be a maximum here. C sub S is less than your maximum and greater than your minimum. So what does that mean? That means C sub S, C sub S is equal to 0 0.20. And the last step of this is going to be, okay, how do we calculate our base shear? Let's go back. So we had our base shear, V, is equal to C sub S times W. So V is equal to C sub S times W. That's equal to 0 0.20 times 1525 kip. V, therefore, is equal to 305 kips, okay? So we can highlight, that's our answer in green there. 305 kips. And does a problem have anything that looks like that, 305 kips? Well, yes, it does, okay? So just to go back and review, what we did was based off of the occupancy load and the type of structural system that the problem stated and the parameters, the seismic design parameters, we went and we calculated a base shear. That base shear is based off of a seismic coefficient and the total weight of the building. The seismic coefficient is based on these parameters, the spectral response acceleration parameters, okay? The response modification factor and the importance factor of the building, right? Those, those factors, when given, can be used in conjunction with the formula presented in ASCE 710 and used to calculate the seismic the seismic coefficient okay that seismic coefficient when taken and multiplied by your weight is going to give you your base shear on your building and just to just, just to reiterate again you'll want to have access to the cbc the california building code you'll want to have access to the risk category table and be able to identify and i'll include the link to the CBC section, uh, it's publicly accessible on their website. I'll include a link in the description. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to be able to identify based off of some type of occupant load or some type of uh, the name of some type of building. You'll want to be able to identify the uh, the risk category, and that's going to kick you to ASC 710. And you'll be able to identify the uh, the importance factor. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, comment send me a message, uh, let me know your thoughts. I'm always looking for ways to 
improve my videos uh, and looking for ways to, to convey information better. If you're looking for any more sample problems, please let me know. I'm definitely always, always happy to help. Thank you very much and uh, have, a, have a great day.